I was trained as an analytical chemist with a particular interest in instrumentation, and that's what took me to Beckman Instruments, where I met Dr. and Mrs. Beckman. I'm a board member of the Foundation, and my history with the Foundation goes back to 1976, when the Beckmans made the decision to give their money away, or to try and give it away. And that's when he first shared the idea. And um, we met in, uh, at a, well, hmm. I took him to a meeting in Houston. And it was at that meeting, over dinners, that he shared his plans for the future. And he and, <clears throat> pardon me, my daughter and I put the Beckmans on a plane in September of 1978 when he came here to Illinois, and that's when he and Ted Brown first met. And from there, from that point on, I was pretty well informed of the plans that he was carrying out to establish the Beckman Institutes in the center at Stanford. And uh, that's how I came to know Ted Brown. Well, Dr. Beckman uh, and Mrs. Beckman wanted to give their funds away. And their idea was to give it back to science. So they created a foundation and they struggled for years to give the fortune away. But every time they gave money away, it seemed to get replaced. And he was very frustrated. He had a stack of folders requesting funds on his desk that was probably a foot high. And that was an ongoing frustration. And during the time that the Beckman Center here in Illinois was being planned, uh, Mabel developed cancer. And she survived until June of 1989, and so was able to live through most of the planning and saw most of the construction here at Illinois. My reaction, or my engagement, if you will, with the Beckmans, as I said, began in 1976. And he and I developed a friendship and talked ongoingly about his plans for the foundation in general and for the Beckman Institutes that he was funding at that point in the uh, late 80s. And <clears throat> at a point um, after Mabel died in June of 1989, um, and that September when he fell and broke his hip, um, We'd had many discussions about what his aspirations for were for the foundation ongoing, whether he wanted to give the fortune away in his lifetime or whether he wanted the foundation in perpetuity. So I became active in um, his planning for that and uh, later joined the board in the mid-90s um, mid uh, and have been on the board ever since. Arnold Beckman was the catalyst, the inspiration for the second revolution in chemistry, what we call the electronic revolution. Prior to the mid-1930s, chemistry was uh, what we call wet chemistry. You put two chemicals together and you observe what the reaction was. Um, there was no real way to amplify and to look directly at the physical properties of molecules. Uh, spectroscopy, which is a fundamental tool uh, of chemistry, was brought to life, to commercial life, by Arnold Beckman's invention of the DU spectrophotometer and the first production infrared spectrophotometer, the Beckman IR-1, which was used in the synthetic rubber program during World War II and which was uh, instrumental in the elucidation of the structure of penicillin in 1945. Oh my, many, many stories. He, he was a great one for 
for jokes, and he always wanted to know if he had a new joke. And his favorite joke was about integrity. And young boy asks his father, he says, what's the definition of integrity? And his father pauses and he says, well, son, I don't believe I have a good definition, but I can give you an example. And the example is that your uncle, my brother, and I own a general store together. And today, one of our best customers came in and paid his bills. And at the end of the day, when I closed the register, I realized that there were two bills stuck together. And that brings up a question of integrity. Well, Father, what's that? The question of integrity of whether I should share the second bill with your uncle or not. Ted Brown was a unique individual along with, with Harry Gray. Both the Beckman Institutes at, here at Illinois as well as Caltech were being planned, designed, and built at about the same time. The Beckmans partitioned their lives. They didn't host um, gatherings at their home with the company, with uh, civics groups. Um, rather, they held home as being a very private place. Because of the relationship that both Harry and Ted developed with the Beckmans, they got to know them personally. And when Ted would come to visit the West, he would stay with the Beckmans. They very rarely had um, guests at their house other than family members, and uh, Ted was a very rare exception. For the most part, Dr. Beckman considered it a conflict of interest to have any of the directors from Beckman Institutes or the Stenner at Stanford being members of the board, because these were institutions that he was funding on an ongoing basis. He made an exception with both Ted Brown and Harry Gray. He'd come to trust them implicitly, and they gave him very good counsel. The interdisciplinary nature of both the Beckman Institute here at Illinois and at Caltech is very much a um, product of discussions the three of them had about how to leverage research and get away from the silo structure that is characteristic of most universities. No, I was not involved in the process of setting up this institute, except at a distance. I do know that the um, planning and, and construction of the BI here at Illinois and also Caltech were two of the most passionate projects that the Beckmans ever pursued. And as I said, it was a close relationship between the Beckmans, Ted Brown, and Harry Gray that formed very much the uh, Arnold Beckman's thinking for the Beckman Foundation. Interdisciplinary research comes out of Arnold Beckman's experience in industry. When he built a product, it took a mechanical engineer, an electroniker, uh, a physicist, um, and a chemist to bring all the disciplines together to build an instrument system. And he saw that need in academia. And of course, that's the discussion the three of them had many times and it resulted in the uh, multidisciplinary approach that the foundation has taken, as well as that that you see expressed both here and uh, at Caltech. Classic university structure with departments, chemistry being separate from physics and often competing for funds in the same organization, um, is not conducive to multidisciplinary research. And how do you break that? Because the disciplines are separate, the funding is separate, and how do you bring them together? And so the idea of having an interdisciplinary uh, department building uh, you might consider it a, a Greek society, if you will, bringing people of different disciplines together uh, was unique 
and for the most part continues to be unique in many universities throughout the world. The legacy of, of Beckman and Brown really resides in the in, interdisciplinary approach to solving problems. Arnold Beckman was a great problem solver. He was able to take theory and apply it. He was very good with his hands. And I think we see that very much in Ted as expressed in the textbook that he's been the author of for so many years. Here you find bringing together various disciplines, various approaches, and presenting them to the student. And that's exactly the kind of, of thought process Arnold Beckman enjoyed. The future for the foundation is, is very bright. It is uniquely positioned to support biology and chemistry and has a focus and dedication that few other foundations of its uh, ilk have. Uh, so many foundations happen because somebody has a philanthropic purpose without real vision and mission. And the Beckman Foundation has both vision and mission. The, um, the grant being made by the foundation um, to the Beckman Institute here at Illinois in the name of Beckman and Brown is really intended to support, encourage, and facilitate young people in science. Because that's what both Beckman and Brown believe is important. Mm -hmm.